Hello and welcome. Today we are in the grandstand with a Formula 3 driver, Dennis Hauger. How are you doing today, Dennis? Uh, all good. Back home. So, uh, yeah, it's nice to be a bit uh, home now. Yeah, well, not just back home, but I understand that somebody has just turned 18 just yesterday when we were speaking. So, how was your 18th birthday? Um... I was actually celebrating it in quarantine, so uh, not so much happening, but it's nice to be a bit home because it's not often that I'm uh, home at my birthday, to be honest, so that was nice, but uh, yeah, good to be uh, legal. <laughs> yes, that's, that's the important thing. So legality is in Norway, I guess, when you turn 18. Drinking, driving, what, what can you do that you couldn't have done last week? Well, mainly the driving part, it's nice to get uh, my license. Um, I will get that in a few days, so um, so that will be nice. So is there any concerns? Have you got your driving license? I guess you've, you've done your test already, or how, how, does, how does that work? Uh, I have the, I've done the theory exam thing, uh, which I got past, which I, to be honest, I thought was the harder part because um, that's. I think the driving part should be fine. I just don't have to do anything stupid, basically. But <laughs> but we'll we'll see. Suddenly something happens, but uh, should be fine. Yeah. Well, if you don't get that driving part done, then something's gone wrong. Would you even tell the public if you did struggle on the driving test? Probably not. To be honest. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> well, we want to go through a lot of stuff. And of course, you've got Formula 3 coming up. But before we talk about that, way before you were 18, uh, we've got to go back into the past where, from my understanding, you were on two wheels initially doing a little bit of um, biking as well as ice karting. So just seems like you're racing from a very early age. How did you get into that? And it's ice karting as much fun as it sounds. Yeah, I think it all started basically with my father. I was watching him uh, driving when I was around one um, and he was doing rallying. And then uh, when I was two, I got my first uh, quad. So it actually started on four wheels. But uh, when I got uh, around four, I think I got my first motorbike. Um, and that went pretty well. And then, yeah ice karting and normal karting since I was like five, six. Um, so yeah, started quite early to be honest, but yeah, I started racing in Norway when I was eight, cause that was the, the age you were starting to be, uh, yeah, be allowed to drive uh, in the races. So yeah, started a bit earlier than that, but yeah. And what made you choose the sensible option and go on to four wheels rather than two for your competitive future? Uh, when I was eight, I had to choose between motorbike or karting. Uh, and then it was quite simple. I wanted to do karting, basically. The formula world is going to be very thankful for that. So we want to skip past, do a little bit of a, a time lapse. And now you into driving cars and you're in British Formula 4. You were driving for Christian Horder's Arden. How did you find that jump from the carts into the cars? Mm, yeah, obviously quite different. Uh, all the techniques and everything is quite uh, a big step in terms of what you have to remember and what you have to go through in, during the race. Uh, but uh, yeah, it wasn't too bad. The beginning of the season, I came third in my first race. So I was pretty much up there straight away, which was a nice feeling. And then during the season, we had some problems. But I think overall, getting into there was quite, uh, quite all right, although it's quite quite a big step uh, especially when you're 15 so yeah and with that Arden side of things was that when Red Bull became a part of your life so Christian Horner of course the team principal at Red Bull Racing you were part of the Red Bull or are part of the Red Bull family how did that happen um, I was doing karting when I first got in got uh, contacted by them by a helmet. I think I was ending 13 or beginning to be 14 and I was doing karting and then I got we got a call and a meeting and I got a free simulator test at Red Bull and I was, it was going really well so 
uh, after that the contract was sort of on the table and I had to had to do another year of karting because I was 14 still uh, so I was sending reports to them after every race and before I got up to formal cars they were they were there already so um, it began before that but uh, yeah there was that was sort of the beginning of the journey I would say uh, beginning of quite a hopefully a long journey and sounds interesting that you've got Helmet approaching you, I guess, through talent scouts. Or were you, or your manager, or your family, were you putting out the word that Dennis Hauger is a driver that you should be paying attention to? Uh, not not really. I was just uh, driving with uh, and doing what I love. Um, I was driving for CRG uh, back then, and also Verstappen was there. And I think I saw his father use Verstappen on the races sometimes. And I don't know if that was a connection, but I think it came from several parts um, on, on, of several people. So uh, we didn't really push for anything. I was just driving and doing what I loved. Um, but then it suddenly came there. So, uh, yeah, it was a nice feeling, obviously, to to get that. Yeah, if, uh, if anybody gets Red Bull backing, they're doing something right. And... You've got a manager, I understand, Harold Hoisman, who has managed Jensen Button. He helped Kimi Raikkonen get into Formula One. When did he get involved? Is that during the karting days? Is that recent? Uh, I think my father contacted him quite early. I didn't really know about it either, but uh, they were talking for a few years before I actually met him because um, I was still quite young. Uh, but when I got up and I got I think it was it was before I got to contact by Red Bull as well. Uh, well, around 13, 12, 13, uh, where we actually started meeting and working together. Um, and I'm his first Norwegian uh, Norwegian driver, so that's quite nice to to have that as well. And I've got really good in touch with him because we've been traveling so much over the past years. Um, but yeah, he, he has a lot of the contacts. I remember I did uh, go to a race at Spa, at Formula, a Formula One race at Spa with him. It was my first Formula One uh, weekend, like watching. And uh, I got to go with him through the Formula One pit lane. And then uh, he couldn't walk five steps before he met someone he knew. So I was just in complete shock, to be honest. But, but yeah, uh, it's... It's really good to have him with them. I think uh, it's important to have him with as well and an important person in my life as well now. So, Yeah, well, did he, uh, did he have any tips for you? Has he put you in touch with any of the people that he does know to say, you know, what, what advice can you give a young Norwegian kid trying to make his way into the Formula world? Obviously, he's been driving as well uh, when he was younger now. Um, in a lot of races, 24-hour races, and almost into F1 as well. Uh, one, I think, the closest one to get there as a Norwegian. Um, so he obviously has a lot of experience and a lot of people around that he knows uh, what what they do. So, uh, so I obviously got a few tips and and a few things, and of course sponsors as well. It's been quite good at that. So. Uh, it's been an important uh, part of the journey so far, for sure. Yeah, well, it sounds it and yeah, very, very crucial. And you mentioned sponsors there. And we've heard from some drivers, famously George Russell, in terms of getting a team drive. And we've heard from other people we've interviewed in the grandstand about going to sponsors with like PowerPoint presentations and so on to say, this is my career. Is that something that you've done? Do you have any memories of that any sort of embarrassing lines if you did uh i'm not sure to be honest i've never really i don't think i've done any of that normally especially when i was a bit younger uh i was just driving and doing what i love didn't really think about too much else obviously sponsors and stuff and and we me my father and harold were really working to get that and working together for that uh, with uh, presentations and everything uh, and I remember I had I think it was in the end it was at over one and a half hour presentation or something for some of the sponsor and I, I think I was 15 or 14 back then 
so I've always been a part of that, and I think that's also good. That's me to to grow as a person and as a professional driver, of course, uh, to be a part of that. So uh, yeah, it's been a few moments, but uh, but yeah. You know, it's paying off and paying off in dividends in particular with your Formula 4 campaign. You did a dual Italian and ADAC and you were just completely yeah, on, a different, on a different level. How did you find your year in Formula 4? Uh, yeah, obviously a really good year. Uh, I think we could have got the German Championship as well, as well but there was a few more issues there. Uh, that stopped us, like a technical issue in Nürburgring when I was leading and those things. Uh, so yeah, I think overall a really good year and, and also with the team on Amersworth, I was working really well with them, uh, which made us able to really work as, at the setup and at the car and, and at me as well. I'm really putting everything together. Uh, so uh, it was definitely a nice year and I really enjoyed it. Yeah, you were particularly dominant in the Italian F4 and in that latter half of the season, I think you were off the podium once uh, in those final half of the Italian races. So what was the secret? Do you have just a natural affinity to those Italian tracks or was that just you and your team, like you mentioned, Van Amersfoort, working so well together? Yeah, I had never really been to any of the tracks uh, before, of course, the season testing. Um, but I think me and the team was working really well together and also we made a, we got the setup that was working really well for me uh, which which is quite important obviously to get the maximum confidence you can get after the car and after yourself on the track so uh, I think that was one of the main things you know working with the team to get the maximum potential out of everything of course massively important so you go from Formula 4 and you don't go into Formula Regional, you make the jump straight into FIA F3. Was that a conscious decision by yourself or was that just you saw an opportunity to join F3 and you thought, I have to do it sooner than later? Um, yeah, it was sort of... Uh, yeah, it wasn't 100% my, my decision, but with uh, Red Bull and uh, my manager and... Uh, Everyone around, uh, we got got in the end uh, that idea. So uh, it was something we we had planned. Um, obviously, we thought it was going to go better <laughs> this last year than it actually did. Uh, and it was a bit of a frustrating year, but uh, yeah, an experience I will take with me into this year, obviously. And did you, did you find quite a big? improvement in the car performance well, i say improvement of course will be an improvement in terms of speed but how did you find the jump from the formula four cars to the formula three cars um i think it's one of the bigger steps to be honest uh, in 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 the formula cars um it's quite different in terms of procedures and everything gets quite more crucial in terms of how the soft soft the tires are you have to really work them and and play it smart during the race and qualifying because you only get like two three push laps in the qualifying and that's it uh, so you really need to be on it straight away uh, which is one of the key points in in the series um, and now the route and the new rules for this year with the three races and everything gonna make it uh, even more interesting so uh, that's gonna be uh, yeah that's gonna be fun yeah it's gonna be a, a very different season this year before we go into 2021, of course, we do want to talk about it. We saw on some promo videos that Red Bull, and Red Bull put a lot of promo videos out, that you were you know, doing a lot of sim work and you know, sleeping in the factory at points. Is that something that you're continuing to do or was that something that you were doing back in the day when you were just trying to get your feet under the table with, with Red Bull and adapting to Formula 3, Formula 4? Uh, no, it's something I've done... I've always been really trying to really connect with the teams and everything and always traveling with them, um, which is something I find really important to have a good team effort and a good uh, rhythm together on the on the track and off the track. Um, so I've always been quite a bit with them. In Van Amersfoort, I was sleeping at the factory because they had uh, a bedroom there. Uh, so I could just use that when I was traveling there. And uh, so I didn't have to pay for hotels or anything. It's just a lot easier. Uh, but now 
like at Prema, they don't have a bedroom or anything, but they have a, a regular hotel a hotel they used uh, together. So that's where I'm staying now normally. Uh, but yeah, always trying to connect with the team and everything. So uh, that's ma the main reason why. That's very, very professional of you. And we talked about that Formula 3 season last year. And of course, you mentioned the frustrations you had. You've gone from 2019, where you were dominant, like we said, with winning so many races in both German and Italian F4. How much of a come down is it to be fighting in the middle of the pack after getting on the podium so much? Yeah, it was, it was not uh, the best feeling. Um, I was really working hard the whole season to, to get up there. And I think uh, everything didn't come together with me and the car in the end in terms of balance and everything, um, which is something I find really well in the Prima car now compared to before, because uh, I can really work on how I want it and uh, how I can get the maximum out of me and the car together. Um, so that's something important for me. Um, but yeah. On the wet last year, I could uh, be up there because I think I'm quite good at wet. But uh, yeah, it didn't really go together on the dry, unfortunately. But just have to take the experience with me uh, onto this year, really. So not much to do about it now. Now, for the layman who is new to Formula or feeder Formula racing, they believe that the cars are all equal and essentially the same chassis, but. You mentioned there that the car with Prima for this year and your car with Hitech last year, you're just finding the setup a lot easier. What is it that changes between the teams? I uh, can't really say exactly what, but uh, but yeah, it's so much about the setup, wings. There's so many wings and, and other things that you can change on the car. Uh, overall, the chassis is the same, but a lot of things you can change for the balance. Uh, so depending on what I like, obviously, uh, to change it. And that was one of the main struggles. Couldn't really get what I wanted uh, last year and, and struggle a bit with the confidence in the car, uh, which doesn't, which makes me doesn't having to, or I can't really put everything out there. Um, but yeah, when I had the test with Prima, I felt quite confident straight away and, uh, and sort of the balance I was looking for was there. So. Uh, yeah, uh, should should be good this season, and hopefully we can push for that. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure you will. You're going to be one of the favourites for the title, and we are going to talk about that 2021 season, which will be a little bit more hopeful for you, I'm sure. But also on a better note, you did a bit of Formula Regional last year, and you came in back to your team Van Amersfoort, and you were brilliant. If you started the championship from when you joined, you would have won. How good was it to go back into been at the front end of the pack yeah i think i also did i also actually did um, a porsche scandinavia race um so i did, did i've done two other series on the side just because it was uh, basically free so um just to get some mileage was really nice and i, I did a race which was some completely different thing with the porsche but i was up there straight away and putting pole and i think i had three podiums or something uh, and also in the regional, I was up there and putting more, most points in the end of the season overall, which was really nice. Uh, also with the team from 2019, Van Amersfoort, uh, which I already knew quite well. And uh, they obviously struggled a bit more in the beginning of the season. Uh, so it was nice to really um, yeah, have worked with them to, to get them up there and get myself up there as well on the on the setup and everything. And I think we improved that quite well. And we were always up there in the end. Also, my teammate, we could work together to push each other. So, uh, yeah, it was a really nice ending of the season to be to be up there and winning. Yeah, I bet it was. And you mentioned your teammate there, Pierre-Louis Chauvet, and his performances himself, or his results at least, they seemed to you know, change almost overnight when you joined. Was that just your experience, your education from Red Bull that helped? Yeah, I don't know if it's experience because he's older than me actually, but, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I think overall when I got there, I think I knew from the first session after the first session how I sort of wanted the car. And I think we got a decent pace straight away. 
and they have also been working on it obviously over the years or over from from the year before so we already had a decent base but we kept working on it all the time and i think that's that was a good thing and also obviously having uh, two decent teammates we could push each other all the time and uh, it's cool to see how he's doing also in the asian f3 uh winning over f2 drivers and everything so uh so yeah it was a was a good ending of the season yeah it really was and one of the things when you know we write about the formula junior formula red bull have this content pool which is amazing got all these photos and a lot of the photos of you in the paddock were you juggling is that a hidden talent did you join the circus at a younger age what's that about uh, no, I've just always, since I was probably 12, 13, um, I started juggling uh, as a warm-up thing. And I think I used like probably like two, three months of my summer just uh, trying to <laughs> trying to get it properly in uh, when I was really young. So, uh, so no, it's always just been a part of my uh, warm-up routine really and always, uh, always been there when I was younger. <laughs> As uh, a fellow juggler, that was a, a COVID lesson for me. I to learn how to juggle. Uh, yeah, it's really good, though, especially to get both of your uh, half brains together and really putting the focus in. Uh, so that's mainly why I do it. Yeah, but it sort of helps you with, um, I don't know, reaction time as well. When you feel one of those balls doing one direction, you can pick it up. Is that something potentially that's helped you in the driving or is that just a little bit of a thing to do when you're bored? Uh, obviously when you when you have race weekends you will sort of have a routine through the day so warm-up is a part of that routine so and so before 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 the main race uh, so I always juggle and do some other workout stuff to to get in sort of a rhythm and a zone uh, to get just yeah, myself and my body prepared for everything. Yeah, well, it's going to be something we look out for this year. And let's go into this year then, 2021. You're joining Prima. Just how crucial is 2021 for your career and your future? Uh, obviously, it's the second year now, so it's going to be an important year uh, to do good. Um, I'm in Prema now as well, which is uh, a good team and felt quite confident uh, on the test so uh, yeah we should be up there straight away but uh, yeah it's going to be important here for me as well during uh, during this journey because you know it's uh, not a lot of people who take a third year in F3 I think uh, a few of them have but they're a bit older um, so yeah I just have to focus on what what I have to do and uh, yeah, what I do best and then <laughs> then we'll see. Well, we're hoping you're going to do well. You mentioned with your Formula 3 first year that wasn't entirely your decision to join Formula 3 at the time. Is it something that was your decision or was it Red Bull's decision to, to go down the Prima route? Because Red Bull and Prima don't generally, Pierre Gasly aside, generally work together that often. Uh, no, it was sort of uh, our decision. Um, also, Van Amersfoort was our decision, so it's gone. It, it went well when we we, we took that. But uh, I had we had I had been talking with the with them a bit when I was driving F4 because they were one of the main team competitors. Um, but yeah, uh, they've always looked really good and always really passionate about what they do as well which is something I find really important to have that passion. Um, so yeah, was basically uh, our decision and we got in contact and and we had got a test together and uh, they were uh, impressed by it. So that's mainly the, the reason why we got to see it uh, this year. So really happy for that and hopefully we can have a good year, obviously. Now we mentioned that your Prima it's such a good seat for you to get in the top three should be a you know almost a, a certainty at this point do you get any sort of expectation set from you for red bull for continued support i listened to a podcast with 
Daniel Kvyat, and you know, he mentioned at your age and younger, he had Helmut Marko on the phone saying, if you don't win this weekend, we're going to have to talk about your future. Is that sort of pressure that you're getting as well? Uh, yeah, Helmut is quite straightforward. Uh, and obviously, it's a quite brutal uh, junior team, but that's how it is. You know, it's not like uh, football where you get four years in in tr in training. You have to be there straight away. Uh, but yeah, I think in I remember in 2019, uh, before the season started, I had got a phone call that I had to I had to win, uh, and then it was all okay, and then I won. So then it was okay, obviously. But now this year it didn't well, go as planned, obviously. So uh, I haven't got that phone call yet, but I'm guessing I have to be sort of up there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, you're in the best place for it, and you know you've got your you've got your teammates this year. And have you gelled with them so far? They'll be your main competitors. Is that something that's quite uh, awkward, or is that something you're actually relishing to to be racing against your fellow Premier drivers? Uh, no, I think I don't know Colwell that much, but I've I'm new, been. Uh getting to know him a bit now when I, we were doing some sim days in Italy and Arthur I, I know a bit from F4 as well and obviously in regional um, but yeah I don't really look at my teammates as competitors or obviously competitors but we have to push each other as well as teammates um, and overall I'm just trying to work on what I can do myself and not really focusing on everyone else no, rightly so. So, you've gone with Prima this year, of course, and you were there at the test last year in, in October. What differences do you notice with them, both at the testing and both back at the back at the factory, in terms of their setup? You can only refer to high tech at the moment in F3, but just with them being such a prolific team to join, what is it about them that you think is making that difference? Uh... Yeah, I can, over the winter, for example, I can see how much they're working to improve their setup and always find improvements. Um, and really not just working, but really passionate about what they do and always pushing the limit. And also the drivers really working with them on the simulator and, and always starting really early to prepare uh, everything. So I think that's one of the, the strengths they have to, to really get the maximum out of everything and prepare the, everything as early as possible to yeah to be a bit a, a step forward in front of the others uh, and i think that's one of the their keys and you mentioned earlier that you go there in prima sort out a hotel when we spoke to, to dino Boganovic earlier this year he mentioned that he was sharing and bunking with arthur leclerc and uh, Gianluca Petikoff, as it was at the time. Are you bunk buddies of any of the other Prima drivers? Uh, not, no, no, not yet. Uh, at the moment, I normally travel alone, uh, except the races uh, where I have my management father with me, but uh, otherwise I'm traveling alone, but uh, still uh, I'm having my own room at, uh, at this point. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe we will see later, but uh, at the moment it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, I'll keep you fresh. Have a good night's sleep before those races. There's one yeah. thing that I noticed on the back of your helmet, which I think is a great quote, and I'll get it right. So let me just look down. Um, I never lose. I either win or I learn. So for 2021, what is it that you've learned? Um, I think the main thing about that quote is uh, that you sort of learn from your own mistakes and uh, always taking the, every experience with you uh, onto the future and sort of not making the same mistake twice, let's say. Um, so I think all, all the experience I got from 2020 with, uh, with high tech, I can bring on to 2021 and yeah, try to just improve myself as a driver and and uh, and yeah, get the maximum out of out of everything this year. Is there any examples from it, for any of the races that you had last year about something that you really need to improve on? You mentioned you excel in the wet. Is there anything in terms of your dry running, your qualifying pace? 
that you really need to try and improve on for this year? I think uh, last year was a bit of a weird, weird year, obviously. Uh, and I think uh, didn't re ever really get the maximum out of what I wanted. But I think uh, qualifying is uh, one of the main things I've been focusing on this year. Uh, getting everything on the simulator and really pushing everything to get it together on that one lap. Because uh, you don't get a lot of laps in qualifying. You have to be there straight away. Um, so I think that's one of the main things I've been focusing on. I think in, in the race, um, I've been quite good on the race pace and everything. And I think that's been one of the strengths. And also the team is quite good on the race pace. Uh, so I think qualifying is going to be one of the main things uh, we've been focusing on now. And uh, yeah, but everything, everything we're just trying to maximize and improve. But uh, I think that was one of the main things last year, maybe. Mm -hmm. Well, this year it's going to be a different sort of year for Formula 3. You've got an eight race, there's a seven race actually calendar that you're you're doing. Is there any particular tracks you're looking forward to? Uh, well, some of them are uh, the same as last year, but uh, like Sandvort is, is different. Also the layout, I've been there on the old layout, but now it's a bit different. But I think that especially the the last race in Austin is going to be uh, really cool. It's a track I've always always seen and, and done some uh, sim on it uh, at home on the games. But uh, it's, it's a track I've always wanted to go in real life. So it's going to be really cool to go there. And I think the track is really open. So I think it's going to be a lot of fighting there for sure. Yeah, it's going to be a great place for a season finale. And what are your thoughts on the new weekend format with... Formula 2 and Formula 3 going into a shorter calendar. You're doing the race weekends differently to get more races. How are you preparing for that this year? And what are your thoughts? Uh, yeah, it's definitely going to be a lot more fighting and a lot more show for the audience, that's for sure, <laughs> with the uh, three races, because now it's going to be top 12 reserved uh, grid in race one and race two. Um, so... It's going to be a bit weird and a lot of fighting for sure. You have to play it smart. And I think the key will be to be consistent throughout the season, really, and always getting the points. Because um, it's going to be hard to be at top three all the time now, for sure. Um, so, yeah, I think just have to keep it consistent. And I think uh, play it a bit cool, not uh, get overheated in the head or anything like someone else, I, I'm sure, will. Um, so, yeah will be interesting and I think it's a cool format but uh, it's gonna be a lot more uh, uh, yeah things happening yeah it's uh, certainly a cool format from uh, from us watching on TV you in the cockpit you're gonna be exhausted through so much racing um we've got a few questions then from our Instagram and social followers this is a part where I butcher people's names so Kaja Warren wants to know do you have a girlfriend? No, I don't. <laughs> no, time for that. no bet. Is there a follow-up question? Do you do you want to have a girlfriend, or like you say, it's just too busy racing? Uh, no, not really looking for that at the moment. Like, I'm not really stressed about that. When it happens, it happens. But for now, I'm focused on uh, my racing. So, I'm gonna break a lot of hearts, Dennis. And she also has a yeah. follow-up question. She also has a follow-up question, which is, is your dream to reach F1? I guess the, the caveat to that is, do you have any other things? Like, do you want to win Le Mans? Do you want to go into racing in Porsches, the tin tops like you mentioned? Uh, obviously, the goal and the dream now is F1, and that's what I've had the have the focus on. But obviously, still, the the dream is to live a motorsport and, and have a living of that, um, which is still one of the main goals. Uh, so, uh, yeah, living on motorsport, if it's endurance races or whatever, just uh, that I can do what I love. Prima fan page wants to know, what is your favorite song? Oh, I have no idea, to be honest. I can say like my sort of type of music, but I have no idea what my favorite song is, to be honest. I, I like sort of. Before race, I like some rock or uh, depending on where I start, if I'm starting behind, I would like some rock to get like my hype up. 
but if I start in the front, I'm sort of more uh, acoustic uh, kind of stuff with some chilled music. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's quite different, or or rap or whatever. To be honest, I listen to everything. <laughs> so is the answer? What is your favorite song? Is yes, everything is yes. my favorite song. <laughs> yes, a bit of everything. <laughs> Razor Dalhas, I think it's Dalhas, and apologies if we pronounce that wrong. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? Well, hopefully in a F1 seat or in a racing seat where I where I live on racing. Uh, I think that's one of the main things. And how many world championships will you have by that point? I'm not really thinking that far forward, really. Yet I take a step by step and, and just uh, try to max maximize where I am now, and then uh, and then I take uh, step by step, really, but uh, not really focusing on that yet. So, Ed also wants to know your favorite track and the favorite moment of your career so far. Uh, I think my favorite moment would be uh, the triple win in Hockenheim. Uh, which is quite quite rare to happen, and that was really a nice moment with the team and everything. The whole atmosphere was was really good, so I really enjoyed that one. Uh, and the, my favorite track, I would say, either I would say either Mugello, um, Spa, or uh, hopefully Austin. But I haven't been there yet. But it's looking so cool. I will, I will, I will already say it. I think. <laughs> yeah, it looks. It does look like a fun track to drive. We're almost like your favorite song here. It's just every track is my favorite yeah. track. Yeah, but every every track is different, and it's always different techniques on each track. So it's it, the, each track are a bit special in the end. And T Alba's daily drive. I wants to know, aside from your teammates, which will be your prima teammates this year, who do you think is your closest rival for your championship in 2021? I don't know. I don't really haven't really focused on that. Just focused on uh, focused on what I have to do. Not really focusing on the others, to be honest. So <laughs> I won't even answer it. That's that's a cop out of a of an answer there, but I'll I'll let it slide. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Gareth, my uh, my co-author at Grand Prix Grandstand. He's got a couple of questions, quick fire as well. What's your preferred driver number, and if you make it into F one, what number would you like to have on your car? Uh, probably sixty two, which is what I had in F four as well. Uh, either 24 or, or 62 because it's uh, the two numbers I started with in, uh, in karting when I was eight. Uh, so that will probably be be my number. Is there any reason why you went for those numbers or was that just what you were assigned when you turned up the karting track? Uh, no, I think I was... Uh, I actually, I chose them myself, but I think my father and I was just uh, trying to figure out what's a cool number. And then we were like, uh, 24 because because um, uh, we were watching NASCAR and I was watching NASCAR and I saw number 24 on uh, Jeff Gordon's car and, uh, and it just looked so cool when I was younger so so that was sort of my number when I when I got it. Oh, very good, a good uh, a good reason as well. And also wants to know what's your preferred car setup, understeer or oversteer? Oversteer for sure. Is that because of the Scandinavian flick or your ice driving experience? Probably, or I, I, I sort of like a stable car, but it needs rotation. Um, but uh, but yeah, I think probably the overseer comes from the ice because uh, it's quite a bit sideways there. Just, just a little bit sideways. And then <laughs> our final question is from a... Pierre-Louis Chauvet, who wants to know, what are your oh, no. five favorite French words? Oh, no. I think... <laughs> no. Uh, 
the one I use the most is uh, Python, obviously. But I don't. <laughs> and then uh, he's also taught me this word, uh, Le Visiteur, which is uh, a movie, a French movie or something. And then uh, Oui, c'est bon. And, uh, and, uh, I can't really say more words because he's just learned, he's just teach me swear words, so I can't really say anymore. <laughs> but he knows it, so it's fine. <laughs> yes, I had a suspicion Pierre was going to ask uh, that question for those words, so I'll let you off for the final two. But this has uh, been a great place to, to stop with a little bit of fun. So. Thank you for joining us in the grandstand and we really wish you the best for this year. It should be a championship fight uh, and hopefully we can do it again later in the season. Yeah, thanks. And thanks a lot for having me.